Hey everyone, Brian here. I don't know about you, but during my day-to-day -day life, I enjoy keeping track of weather forecasts, especially temperature trends and highs and lows for the day. And the same thing holds true when I'm doing outdoor activities, especially things like backpacking, where I don't have constant access to cable TV and weather forecasts. Now I'm sure there's plenty of little gadgets on the market that would give me access to temperature and maybe even highs and lows for the day. I've never actually owned one until now. And so what I'd like to do in this video is introduce you to my newest piece of gear, which happens to be the Thermodrop zipper pull thermometer. But before I dive into the specs and some of the pros and cons of this device, I'll give you an overview of the company as well as some of the features of the Thermodrop. So the Thermodrop is manufactured by Thermoworks Incorporated, which is an American business headquartered in American Fork, Utah. The company was incorporated in 1997 and is, according to its LinkedIn profile, a high growth technology company dedicated to superior temperature instrumentation and sensors for the food service industry, as well as food processing, pharmaceuticals, transportation, manufacturing, and other markets in science and industry. The Thermodrop displays temperature readings in degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius and keeps track of the minimum and maximum temperatures encountered during the time that it's powered up. It also features an auto-rotating display, a backlight, and it's available in nine colors. The Thermodrop is covered by a two-year warranty, and finally, Thermal Drop is priced at $22 at the time this video was posted, although there is a slight price reduction for orders of five or more. Okay, so before I go any further, let me first dive into some of the technical specifications. According to the company's website, the Thermal Drop has a temperature range between negative 13 and 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has an accuracy of plus or minus 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. It's approximately 1.9 inches high, 1.3 inches wide, and half an inch deep, and it weighs about half an ounce. The display window is 7 tenths of an inch in diameter, and the LCD digits are about 3 tenths of an inch tall. The thermal drop has a 10 second backlight function, and the included 3 volt lithium button cell battery has a runtime of approximately 4,000 hours, which is roughly 167 days. And finally, it has an IP rating of 67. Now if you're not familiar with that term, let me explain what it means. IP rating is an abbreviation of Ingress Protection Rating, and that is a standardized rating system that indicates how much environmental protection an enclosure provides to the electronics and components inside the rated enclosure. The rating consists of two numbers, the first for solids and the second for liquids. The solids number ranges from 0 to 6, and the liquid number ranges from 0 to 8, with 0 on both scales indicating no protection at all, and the highest numbers indicating the most protection. So when looking at this chart here, we see that the thermal drop is totally protected against dust and protected against immersion in a liquid to the depth of one meter for up to 30 minutes. All right, so if you decide to purchase one of these thermometers, you'll receive a small box like this. Inside you'll find a three volt lithium battery, a split ring, the thermal drop itself, and a small piece of paper with operating instructions on one side and a list of various temperature ranges on the opposite side, and even a couple of comical ones like a man cave, which they have listed as 60 to 65 degrees, and grandma's house, which they have rated as 75 to 85 degrees. All right, now that we have that information out of the way, I'd like to go through the various functions and how to access them. So before you do anything, you'll first need to remove the tiny plastic overlay on the display window and install the battery. Simply use a coin or a similar small type object to rotate the back cover in a counterclockwise direction. With the cover removed, insert the battery positive side up, making sure it fits securely beneath the plastic tabs, and then replace the cover. When performing this step though, make sure that the tiny o-ring does not become dislodged. That actually happened to me when I first got my thermal drop, but fortunately I discovered it before replacing the cover. So now that the battery is installed, I'll demonstrate how to use the various functions. To turn on the thermal drop, simply press the small black button. When you want to turn it off, press and hold the button for 5 seconds. Once the thermal drop has been turned on, you can activate the backlight by pressing the button once. To shut off the backlight, press the button a second time, or simply wait 10 seconds and it will shut off by itself. To access the minimum and maximum temperature readings, press and hold the button for 3 seconds. The maximum temperature reading will appear first and will flash for 10 seconds. 
To access the minimum temperature, simply press the button again before the 10 seconds is up. Pushing the button while the minimum temperature is displayed will return the reading to the current temperature. And failing to push the button while either of the temperatures is flashing will also return the display to the current temperature. As long as the thermal drop remains on, the minimum and maximum readings will be available. Powering the thermal drop off and back on zeroes out those values and begins a new session. If you want to change between Fahrenheit and Celsius readings, instead of pushing the button once to power up your thermal drop, simply press and hold the button for 5 seconds. To switch back to the other reading, power off the thermometer, then power it back on by pressing and holding the button for 5 seconds. Before I discuss any of the pros and cons, I do want to mention that I've owned my thermal drop for several months, so all the information I'm going to give you is based on my personal experience. However, it was corroborated by several reviews that I saw online. So first let me begin with some of the things I really enjoy about the thermal drop. I really like that it's small, lightweight, and it's easy to use in various situations and environments. I especially like its ability to recall minimum and maximum temperatures. It's made by a company with a trusted background in temperature sensors and instrumentation, and that it's calibrated in NIST standards, which means it should be fairly accurate. Other nice features include the long battery life and the backlight that makes it easy to read at night or in low light situations. And finally, I like the fact that this product was made in the United States. With that being said, I did come across a couple concerns that range from minor to relatively annoying. So the first issue I encountered was when I attempted to attach the included split ring. The ring is rather small, and the thermal drop is relatively large in comparison, making it very difficult, at least for me, to get the ring out of the housing. Truth be told, I never did get the ring attached because I became frustrated and gave up. As it turns out, I'm not the only person who had a difficult time with the split ring, as was evident by some custom reviews I found online. With that being said, I came up with my own simple solution. I spliced a small continuous loop with some zingot I had laying around the house, and simply large-sided that out of the housing. If you don't have any zingot, or you don't want to go to the trouble of making a continuous loop, simply try a larger split ring, or take a small piece of string, tie a knot in one end, and large-head that out of the thermal drop. Problem solved. Alright, now we'll move on to the thermal drop slow responsiveness. And what I mean by that is if you move the thermometer from a warm environment to a cooler one, or vice versa, you won't get an instant reading. For example, when I was testing my thermal drop, I placed it in a refrigerator, and it took 24 minutes for it to go from 69 degrees to its final reading of 39 degrees. Obviously, the time it takes to stabilize between two environments may be shorter or longer, depending on the temperature differences, so your mileage may vary. As I read through some reviews online, I found various complaints regarding this issue and people who were annoyed that the reading wasn't instantaneous, or at least quite a bit quicker. Okay, so the third concern was definitely the most annoying, and I'll refer to it as the holding effect. And once again, I learned that my experience was shared by other users. I quickly discovered that the thermal drop is highly sensitive to the warmth of my fingers and hands, because the simple process of holding it to turn on the backlight or access the minimum and maximum temperature was enough to alter the current temperature which in certain circumstances could possibly alter your maximum temperature reading. Now even though this bothered me more than the previous two issues, I think it's quite possible to mitigate this by watching where I place my fingers and also by minimizing the amount of time my fingers are in contact with the thermal drop. I have no idea where the temperature sensor is located inside of the case, but it seemed to me that the temperature wasn't affected as quickly if I held the thermal drop by the edges. As soon as I accessed the feature I wanted, I let go of the thermometer and simply held it by the string. Okay, let's wrap up this video with some final thoughts. I've owned my thermal drop for several months now, and during that time I've encountered three concerns. In my opinion, two of them were relatively minor, but the third was rather annoying. However, when I weighed my concerns against the features the thermometer offers, it wasn't enough for me to give up on the thermal drop. I guess I look at it this way. Oftentimes we can find ways to overcome obstacles if we simply take the time to gather a little bit of knowledge and then adapt, improvise, and overcome. And that's how I intend to deal with the thermal drops issue. So, is the thermal drop right for you? Well, that's something you're going to have to decide for yourself. But hopefully this video gave you something to base your decision on. If you're interested in reading more about the thermal drop or maybe ordering one for yourself, I'll leave the information in the description area below. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with someone else. And if you'd like to be notified when I release new videos, hit the subscribe button and turn on all the notifications. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.